Hi, good afternoon. Can everyone see my slide, hear me? How's everyone doing today? Beautiful day here in New York. We had a, well, we missed the hurricane. <laughs> we got a lot of rain, but we pretty much didn't get the hurricane everyone's expecting. <laughs> and now the sun is shining, so that's weather. Welcome everyone. How's everybody doing today? Interesting times we're in. For those of you that have heard me before, my name is Melissa Armo. As you know, I own the Stock Swoosh. Uh, and if you're interested in a trial to the live training room after today's lecture, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com and I can send you a trial for the week. But today, we're gonna talk just in the next hour just gonna give an overview of kind of what I do, my strategy, and really what I do is I focus on institutional money. Now, I've talked to a lot of people over the years as I've been teaching who want to earn a living trading. You know, for some people, 100 grand a year is a living. For some, 250 grand a year is a living. For some, 50K a year is a living. It depends where you live in the country or in the world, actually. But, you know, as far as trading goes, the amount of money that you risk per trade is what really determines your, which is your sizing, okay, number of share quantity, which really will determine how much you're gonna make as far as a beginner, intermediate, or even advanced. We'll go through some of those differentiations today, but you have to be aware of the size of your account. So let's say your goal is to earn a living trading. Let's say that's what you wanna do. And let's say you have a small account, say $5,000. Well, you can't risk $2,500 a trade. You can't risk half your account in one trade. Okay, that's silly. And you should never do that. <clears throat> so you have to look at it in steps. And I know we live in a society and a world right now where everything is, you know, everybody wants everything yesterday. You know, me, me, me. You have to be willing to take it easy to go up the steps when you're doing stuff with progress with trading because if you don't you can hurt yourself and again it's a process where you will maybe take 10 steps forward two steps back three steps forward one step back but if all along the way you're making progress and your account is growing you're gonna to get to the point where you can take a $5,000 account and build it into a $25,000 account and take a $25,000 account and hopefully build it into a $100,000 account. And then obviously you're risking more as you increase, as your, as your cash increases, okay, your amount of cash. Any questions as we go along here, just plop them in the room, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna to talk today about earning $250,000 a year trading on the side of institutional money. Really, my strategy looks for institutional money in the market. Now, I want to just go over here, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this because I didn't plop the charts in here for every ticker symbol. We did the month of July, but July was a very strong month. December, I mean December. Oh my God, I'm thinking December. August. <laughs> I just said December. August has been a very strong month, okay? But for the month of July, we had an 88% win ratio in the live trading room, okay? Now, what is the live room? The live room is where you come in in the morning and I will call the trains, the entry, the exit, the stop. If you wanna do the trains, you do them. That's the purpose of being in the room, okay? Anyways, this was an advanced trader risk of $2,500 per trade. Some are a little bit less, some are a little bit more. So this is an average. When I'm sizing myself, I'll risk a different share quantity in each trade because the stop is different. If I say 50 by 70, that's 20 cents. Okay, if I say 20 by 80, that's 60 cents. So it depends on the number of shares, the difference between the entry and the stop. If you decide to come in the room for the trial this week, you'll see that, okay? And again, if anyone wants a trial, just email me. So the first day of the month of July, we did MU. It was a nice profit again. Average risk per trade was 2,500. MU was a profit of 4,200. MU was a win. I prefer to do one trade a day. If I do one trade a day and I make money, I'm done. July 2nd was Apple. That was a win, 38.50. And again, all of these trades were using my Golden Gap rating system, which I'm gonna to discuss today, which pinpoints institutional money in the market. 
And I'm just showing you an overview how the idea of making, or the goal, I should say, of making $250,000 a year is very doable. And again, this is an average risk of $2,500 a trade. Boeing was a winner on the 13th of July, 2860. BHC was a nice one that was earnings on the 14th, 4050. 15th didn't do any trades. 16th, we had one loser, 2250. Netflix was a winner, same day. Sometimes I'll do a retake, okay? Sometimes if I lose on the first trade, I'll do a second trade. But again, we didn't have many losers in July. Diamonds was a winner on the 19th, 5375. No trades on the 20th. If I get something and I get up in the morning and I don't have any good quality picks, then I won't trade. That's another thing that's extremely important. You don't have to trade every single solitary day. I didn't do anything this past Friday. I didn't like anything. Sometimes you have to be careful. You remember, trading is you're not going to get paid if you just show up. You get paid if you do the right actions. Okay? Very important. Netflix was a winner on the 21st, 2700. LVS was a really nice one on the 22nd, 2460. There was a big move for that stock. INTC was a winner on July 23rd, 2214. LVS again on the 26th was a winner. UPS, I have this chart in here, was a big winner on the 27th, 2980. Microsoft lost on the 28th. Then this is cake, sorry. I misspelled that. It's, that's, uh, this trade is in here. We'll talk about it. It's not kale, it's cake. 37.25 was a winner, and PayPal on the 29th and 30th. So overall, again, the benefit of being in the live trading room with me is I'm calling the trades live, and you can do them with me. But again, the strategy is what I do every single day when I'm making the picks in the morning in the pre-market. Then I get on the mic in the room, then I'm calling the trades. So how can you get these kinds of results? You have to have a strategy that works consistently in the market. We were discussing this today in the room. Many, many people just buy support and short resistance. That's not a strategy that will result in consistent results, but people do it. Right now, the market's rallied. It rallied the last few days. If you bought support of the market, you were up. Does that work every time? Absolutely not. Does it work more than it loses? No, it doesn't. So consistency counts, which means you have to have a strategy that you know what you're looking for. And then you repeat it over and over and over, over and over and over and over again. And that's how you get somewhere with trading. And that's how you can build your account, like I was talking about earlier. You have to use a good strategy. And again, I think one of the big fails for a lot of traders is they absolutely do, they're, they're making trading choices and making trading picks Thinking that something is strategic or that it is a strategy and it is not, is actually not a strategy. It is called a setup. For example, if you want to go long into support in the market on the 20 pair moving average, that's a setup. That's not a strategy. And it's not going to be a consistent winning uh, setup either. Okay. So that's a setup. That's not a strategy. A lot of people just fail in their, in their thought process of what a strategy is. Okay, so that's like, this is just very, very basic, but it's very, very important. So it's important to spend time learning and not just trading. Everybody wants to make money, I get it. I was there when I started out too. I wanted to make money really, really quick and really fast, but I didn't know what I was doing at the beginning and consequently I lost before I realized I had to figure out my own strategy because I didn't have one and that this was the important. Okay, so I taught myself, well, the market was my teacher, but if you come to me, I will be your teacher. Learning is important. It's not just trading. It's great to be in the room and duplicate what I'm doing. That's true. But ultimately, you have to understand it yourself because what are you going to do if I ever leave your life? So you've got to learn it. It's important, not just trading. Uh, Christine, I don't know if you have a question. I see your typing is stuck. I don't know, Kathy, if you can help. And anybody else that has any questions here. When you're writing something in the room, you have to press enter. It's not going to pop up. So anyways, you do not have to feel frustrated in the market daily, even though I know a lot of people have been for the last few weeks in the summer because the market's been sideways and then it seemed volatile, then it faked like it was going to drop. Now it's rallied, made new highs. Honestly, knowledge helps you be less stressed. Then when you lose in a trade, you won't be so worked up because you know you have the knowledge to replicate a winner, the next trade, the next trade, the next trade. Again, trading is about odds. You're trying to keep the odds in your favor, high odds. I'm looking for high odds. I, I love the idea of being able to make money in every single trade. You saw the results in July, but I did have two losers. So I use stops or limit order stops when I take a trade. Why? Because I know there's a possibility that I may take a trade and it may lose. 
This is about high odds, which means more winners than losers. If you're doing that, you can make money. And then you also don't need to have just gimongous winners every time you win. While that's great, and sometimes I get big winners, it's not something that can be planned. I can't always plan necessarily that something's going to continue in a bigger move than I anticipated. That's just the luck of the draw, okay? Thank you, Kathy. Anyways, if you're here and you're not trading or you're trading and you're losing money and you want to trade and you want to be successful but you don't know where to start, the most basic thing that you have to get down pat is you've got to have a strategy. And it has to be a strategy that works consistently in the market, which means what? It has more wins than losses. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to show the July results. So you can see more wins than losses. That's good. That means you're up. And there were a few days in there we didn't even trade, and then I took off for July 4th for a week. So, I mean, you know, but there's times in the market where, again, there won't be a good pick. And then the best thing you could do as a, as a disciplined person is to stand back and say, I'm not going to trade today. Okay. Anyways, for me, what I do is a system called Golden Gaps. It's gaps, but I coined the term golden gaps and named my system that because it's like finding high odds or gold in the market. Because I'm looking for something that has 20 points of a 26 point rating system and it's a system that I created. So it's a system that I sit down and calculate and figure out every single morning on a checklist before the open, before the run, before I do anything at all, before I even put any money on in a trade, I will rate the gap. I get up early. You do not have to get up as early as me. I don't like to rush. Plus, I'm an early morning person. I don't live in the Northeast, so it works for my schedule with the market, which opens at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. But for me, I'm always looking for the best, 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 best thing that I could possibly do in the day. I only need one. That's what I always say to everybody. You only need one. One good trade a day, that's it. And if you're doing this to earn a living, you only need one. It's not about going after it, after it, after it, after it, after it. Because again, the more you trade, if you trade for six and a half hours from 9.30 to four, which I do not do, by the way, you can give money back. You could take a great trade right out of the gate and then lose, 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 lose. And then you're down for the day. A lot of people do that. A lot of trading rooms are open all day. Mine is not. It closes as soon as we're done. Could be 10 o'clock, could be 10.15, could be 10.30. It's rare that I'll keep the room open till 11 anymore, to be honest with you. Sometimes I close the room at 9.45. <clears throat> if I do a trade, boom, quickly, right in the first five minutes, and I don't have anything else to talk about or teach about, then we're done fast. And that's okay. That's actually good, okay? The faster you can make money and the sooner you can be done, then you don't have to worry about the gyrations of the market. You also don't have to worry about White House press conferences, economic news coming out, or anything else that may screw up your trade of the market, okay? So for me... The system that I use is called the Golden Gap. And anyone that's trading, sit and be honest with yourself and ask yourself if you really have a system, if you really have a strategy, or are you just doing what I explained earlier that is a setup? It's really not a system, it's a setup, okay? So think about that, because that may be why your results, you're not getting the results you want or you desire, okay? So again, I, I coined the term golden because it's, it's like finding gold in the market because it has big moves and that's what you want and that's what I'm always looking for. But I really think it's important for people to have a strategy and I think the focus on one strategy for me has helped me to become successful because I replicated over time and I've been doing it for 13 years so I'm very good at it. So it has become second nature to me. Like when you play golf, if you play golf, if you do a sport or something and you do it for a long time, it just becomes second nature, you're good at it. You don't think about swinging the club you just do it naturally okay that's how I am with my trading that's how I am with the rating system that's how I am with my day trades even when I'm looking at an option or when I'm managing the trade when I'm looking to get out the target all of those things <laughs> there's no substitute for experience and if you come to me everyone that comes to me is new even if you trade before you're new to what I do so you have to learn it from me and then you gain the experience but again that's the benefit of being in the live room <coughs> excuse me any questions here when I get a sip of water? No questions, okay. Anyways, you do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Like, I don't read, you know, uh, reports, earnings reports when they come out. I don't go through all that. 
Sometimes I'll scan the Fed minutes, but I don't spend a lot of time on it, okay? I don't have a lot of time to spend on that stuff. Tons of people have read and read and read and they lose money. So what's the point? When you're reading price action, which is what I do, it's based on technical analysis, I'm getting an immediate thing of what's happening. For example, today, the market gapped up today and rallied and made new highs on what? On information that, that, that there was an FDA approval for one of the vaccines. The market had an immediate, in real live time, positive bullish move today and rally because of that. Not, the market didn't care about anything else. Didn't care about COVID, the Delta variant, what's happening in Afghanistan. The market couldn't care less. The market cared about right now, today, that's it, today. Not tomorrow, not Friday, not Wednesday, not next week, okay? So the beautiful thing about trading using technical analysis, which is what I do, is all I care about is making money today right now in the moment reading the price and that's what i'm doing when i'm reading institutional money okay i'm reading the footprints of institutional money that are coming in and the price patterns in gaps and again i'm going to explain in a minute what a gap is but that's it you don't need to do anything else it's really that simple <laughs> but it's knowing the points to look for and analyzing the points that takes the learning that's the process of the learning process and the skill set and the knowledge, okay? Because ultimately, if your reason for doing this is to make money, you really don't care about all these other factors. You care about what's really happening with the price action. If something's rallying, you wanna be long. If something's falling, you're probably losing if you're long. And that's a problem, okay? And getting back to what I was saying about high odds, everything is about risk when you trade. So that's why I use a stop. And when you take an options trade, which we'll talk about a few options here, an options trade is basically the stop is what you risk. So if you take one contract, you can't lose any more than that. You spend $1,000, you can't lose any more than $1,000 on that one particular trade. So, you know, when I'm doing trades, I'm looking at the odds. I'm weighing the cost benefit of it. I might lose this much money in it, or I might make this much money in it. Does it have a good target? Things like that. I'm always weighing the pros and cons. So you can't make money if you don't take risk. One thing I find really, really interesting about traders, and this is just a general, general, general statement here, is that a lot of traders uh, really say that they wanna take risk when they trade, but they really, they say that they want to, they say they're okay with it, they say they understand it, they say they're fine, 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 but in reality, they're not fine. They're not fine taking risk. They really don't want to take risk. They can't withstand even one loss, whether they can't really in actuality in their account or emotionally they can't. The fact is when you trade, you have to understand that some trades will lose. That's the whole purpose of sizing yourself correctly with trades and also using stops. You have to know that. How do you ever get somewhere with this, make 250 grand a year more, is because you have to have more winners. That's what you gotta focus on, the odds. Get the odds in your favor so you have more winners than losers because you're going to have losers. I have losers, okay? And you have to be okay with risk. I don't want to say you have to be comfortable with risk, but I guess you do. I guess you do. And when people do things like spreads and options, which I don't do, they're trying to alleviate their risk. They can't really make a lot of money in trades like that. And when trades go in the right direction of the one they thought, then they never really benefit from it and they never make a lot of cash. The fact is, if you want to get ahead, it involves risk. That's it. You have to embrace it and, and move forward with it and understand. There's a risk associated with taking trades. There's a risk associated with taking my class. My class is $7,000. You're gonna spend the money before you get the information. That's a risk, okay? Everything that you do in life, if you want to get ahead, requires risk. And that is something that you have to be excited about and embrace instead of confronting it in a way that you feel negative and you're trying to say, well, I'm okay with it, but in reality, you're not okay with it, so you're lying to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. If you're really not okay with risk, then don't trade. But by all means, don't say that you are okay with it. Trade, lose money, lose money, lose money, lose money. And I mean, that's a disaster. One, it's a disaster for you financially, and two, it's a disaster for you emotionally and mentally. Why would you do that to yourself? Not everyone is cut out to do this. That is the truth. And after teaching people for a number of years, I realized that. And that's is why I'm bringing up this discussion because I, I'm, I'm, I know now enough about people, I've, I'm very good at reading people, 
that people, when I talked to them, they were really not okay with taking risk, okay? But I can also read people who are okay with taking risk and those are the people that are doing well. And even if they make a mistake or lose in a trade, they get right back on the horse and they get right back on the horse and they can do it. And sometimes when I do that, sometimes if I have a losing trade on a losing day, I get right back on the horse and then I have a huge week or a huge day or a huge trade after that. It makes me push forward even more. That's an unusual quality that I have. But, you know, pushing forward, taking risks will get you ahead in life. And you have to come to terms with that if you want to trade. And the sooner you come to terms with that, the better you're going to, to be. The, the better you're going to do. Instead of kidding yourself, okay? Success means not just taking risks for the sake of taking risks, which is what a lot of people are doing in those Reddit chat rooms right now. Taking ideas from strangers and not understanding what's going on and taking risks for the sake of taking risks, like buying a stock like GME, which people are thinking are going to double in price again, which it may or may not. Nobody knows. There's absolutely no calculated risk involved in that trade whatsoever at all. You have to look at it using calculated risk when you're taking a trade. And how do you do that? You implement a system and you utilize a system that allows you to put the odds in your favor so that you can say, well, if I'm risking $1,000, I have a 22-point gap, rated gap, which tells me that this has high odds, okay, about 80% odds that it's going to work. Therefore, this thousand bucks that I'm going to risk is a good risk for me because I got, you know, better than 50 50 odds, high rated gap, okay? And that's how you think it through and you make the process. It's not just throwing money at the market and throwing money at trades for the sake of taking risk, it's calculated risk. I want to take a class because I really want to learn how to trade because I really want to do this and I want to quit my job and I want to do something else. I'm deciding to do this because I want to learn and I want to learn what I'm doing and I need to learn a system and I don't have a system now and I know that this class costs money but I'm going to get this right and I'm going to do it and I'm going to give it all I have. That kind of thought process, you see, you know, this is, this is how your mind works. Your mind works in ways that many, many people don't even understand. And, and it's interesting, I understand so much about the mind, I've read a lot about it, and I'm really in touch with myself, and I'm highly intuitive. But I will tell you right now that one of the reasons why people lose money in the market is that they simply are not willing to take risk. They risk money, but they're not really willing to. I don't know if that makes any sense. Any questions? Hello, is anybody there? Am I talking to myself? I know Kathy's there, unless she's feeding the cat. Hello, it's 4.55 in New York City. Am I talking to myself? Mm -mm 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 -mm. No one's writing any comments, so I must be talking to myself. <laughs> Oh, there's Kathy. Kathy's alive and she's not feeding the cat. <laughs> All right, getting back to what I was talking about. Charles, there you are. Charles, I saw you in the open house last week. Are you gonna get back to trading? You were trading, you were doing well, then you weren't doing well, then you took a break. Sometimes you, it's good to take a break every once in a while and come back. Anyways, let's talk about institutional money. Footprints, big ones, big ones, big ones. Think about when you go out into the woods and you see a bear. Well, hopefully you wouldn't see a bear, but if you saw the footprints of a bear, it's something that isn't gonna escape your notice. Institutional money is big, big footprints of money that come into the market. It could be buying, it could be selling, it could be shorting, okay? Either way, it's the idea of money that moves stocks in one direction or another, either up or down, okay? Here's an example. This was a trade we did today. We did NVIDIA. This was a nice move. I called calls and in the options letter in NVIDIA. It ran up right out of the gate. A beautiful, beautiful bullish move. So what happened in NVIDIA? NVIDIA got bought. This was an institutional long that money came in and bought the stock. So let's go over to Gap as I've been talking about it. A Gap is due to the close in the open. NVIDIA closed here on Friday. Boom, open Monday morning here and rallied. 
Show it gapped up. Again, I will do bullish gaps and I will do bearish gaps. This in the case of NVIDIA was a bullish gap and it ran straight up, okay? It got bought. Everyone see this here. So anyways, there's the rally. Dream target actually was 220. This is a beautiful move. It was like a $10 move in one day. So what else do you get with institutional money? You get big moves. That's how you can make money in the market is one individual trader big moves because you are not going to move a stock like this 10 points no matter you could throw your whole account into it you're not going to move it you've got to have big money big big money that comes in and scoops it up and buys it or pushes it down and sells it but in the case of nvidia here this was a long this was a nice call it was a calling options newsletter okay so here is another one institutional money that sold the stock gap down this was ups this was back in july Stock closed here, gap down. Again, closed the night before up here, around 210 and change. Open in the morning here, around 198 and change. Fell, sold off, fell 10 points here on the day. We shorted this and we did puts. It was a nice straight. So again, this got sold off, had institutional selling. So what you would have wanted to do here, short it, okay? What you would have wanted to do here is go long, okay? So institutional money can move in both directions. Again, I do bullish gaps and bearish gaps. But the reality is that you can make money going in both directions, okay? You can, but I'm looking for the gap. Like I got up in the morning, the morning of UPS, and I rated the gap. I rated the gap using my golden gap rating system, and I determined that UPS, in fact, would continue falling, and it did. Just like I rated NVIDIA this morning and determined that this was going to get bought, and it did. And by the way, even though the market rallied today, this would have gone today without the market. Didn't even need the market today. Okay. Any questions here so far? Yeah, Kathy, I don't know what you're doing. All the chat's gone. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing or if that was the cat on your keyboard. Just put my information back in the room for people. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying earlier, benefits versus risk. The benefit if you learn how to trade and if you learn how to make money and you can do it and you're successful, there's many, many benefits. You can quit your job, you can work for yourself, you can work from home, you have unlimited income. It's fun too. The risk is that you're going to spend money taking trades, risking money in trades, not knowing the outcome until you're out of the trade. The risk is that you will take a class like mine and you will spend money not knowing what the information is of the system, what it's about, okay? The risk is also you may learn it, do the class, start trading, and it may take you longer than you thought to actually learn it, or maybe shorter, I don't know, but the risk is you don't know. Could take a day for you to learn it, could take a week, could take a year, you don't know. That's the risk. When are you going to make the money that you want to make? You don't know. There's risk involved. Nobody knows. There's no guarantees. The timing of things isn't always necessarily what we want it to be. Sometimes it's better than expected. Sometimes it's not. That's life in anything, okay? So it's always benefits versus the risk. You weigh them. When I quit my mortgage job, there was, you know, risk involved. But for me, the benefits of quitting my mortgage job and trading far outweighed then the risk and so i ended up doing that because i really didn't like my mortgage job i wasn't happy doing it in fact i was miserable so you have to weigh the benefits versus risk of anything that you do and choices that you make in life and particularly trading and you know what else i find for me i'm very black and white with my decisions i either like something or if i don't like friday i didn't like anything i didn't trade there were some things that people liked in the room, some things people did in the room that worked. I didn't like them. I'm very black or white. I either like something or I don't like anything at all, or I don't like it, okay? But I will tell you that when you get to that point where you can make a defined decision, I want to do this and I'm going to do this, that's it. Many, many people are looky-loos and they're on the sidelines and they're waiting and they're hanging and teeter-tottering like they want to do it, but they haven't done it. And they think about training, but they haven't opened an account yet. And they're maybe going to do it, but they don't really know. And they're just kind of in limbo. Well, as soon as you make the decision what you're going to do, you'll be far, far better off. It's like if you ever wanted to lose weight and, you, and you're just like, well, I wanted, 
I want to go on a diet, but I don't know when I should start. And maybe I'll start here. And then maybe I'll start after Labor Day. And maybe I'll wait till then it's Christmas. Then it's Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll, oh, do, do, but do. The sooner you make the decision to start the diet, the sooner you're going to lose weight. And the better you're going to feel about yourself and everything else. Or an exercise program or anything like that. Making a decision and just starting it and taking action is just such a huge step in any any big goal that you have, any future endeavor, whatever, whatever it is, you know. Any questions here so far? So again, it's risk to reward for me. So I have a 26 point rating system. If the gap rates under 20, the rule is not to do it. If it's 20 or more, then I can do it, okay? So that's where I balance the risk to reward. And as I was discussing with you earlier, just like with you saw the NVIDIA today, I'm looking for a good risk to reward payout. I wanna get paid. I think one to one is a good payout, but many trades I do are more than that. Like you saw the July results. We're gonna look at some here in a minute. So I want a good payout. Good payout for me is 100%. And that I consider a big profit, considering the fact that, you know, I'm just one individual. I'm not running a hedge fund in trading, you know. To be able to make a couple thousand dollars a day, that's a good trade. That's a big profits to me, especially when many people are losing. And some people can barely even make $50 a day. The other thing I like about trading is, in reference to gaps, the moves usually happen quick. Now, I wouldn't say all the time, but most of the time, most of the time, the high, high majority percentage of the time, the moves happen pretty fast. What do I mean? In an option, 24 to 48 hours, and in a day trade, in the first 30 minutes to half an hour, or hour of the day, just to give you some kind of time frame. Most of the trades, that's how they work for both the day trades and the options. And again, I'm focusing on one thing. I'm focusing on the gap. That's it. Boom. Now, you can use gold, my Golden Gap system for options and day trades. The options is a newsletter. If you want to subscribe, the newsletter is emailed to you, like everybody got the NVIDIA trade today in the morning pre-market if you want to do the day trades you join the room in order to join the room you have to be a student of the golden gap course there is no prerequisite though for the options newsletter you can just sign up and join but you're going to manage the trades yourself and not know the system i do have targets in the letter i would follow along that and i would also follow along with a 50 percent return on investment or 100 percent return on investment profit margin so say you take a trade say it costs a buck you could just put an option in and sell it at about 50 and walk away as soon as you buy the option. You don't have to sit there and watch it, watch it, watch it. Now, I like to watch stuff. Like, I like to see what's going on. I'm here, I'm watching stuff. But if you're busy and you're doing other things, you don't have to babysit the options. The day trades, you do have to be in the room. You do have to be there live. They go so fast, you can't really walk away. Well, no, a stock is gapping. And then I can do it as an option. It's the same system, that's my point. It's the same concept, like the UPS. Let me go back. This gapped. We shorted this as a day trade and we did a put. They both worked. This gapped down. Closed here the night before, gapped down. I rated in the morning. It rated per my golden gap system that it would fall. And I said, okay, this is a good one. We're gonna do a put in it and we're gonna do a day trade in it. And we did and they worked and it was good. It's the same gap. It's the same system. It's two different ways to do it, which you could do both or one or the other. Some people do both. Some people do one. Some people do just the day trade. Some people do just the options. People have jobs that can't be in the room in the morning at 9.30 Eastern time do the options. People that can be in the room, I find, are in the room. Even if they're just doing options and not day trades and options, they like being in the room to hear me call it. But anyways, there are some people in the room that are just day trading. They don't do options. They never did options. They may in the future. It has to do with the rating system. Everything has to do with that. Everything, everything, everything. That's the system. Again, the idea of following a system and focusing on one thing. Now, we did this one. This was Facebook. I called a late trade in this, to be honest with you. I could have called this earlier. I called this on July 30th. I called the Facebook 350 puts. Now, I'm going to go back to the daily chart. This is the newsletter. You would have gotten this at 9.14 in the morning on Friday. So I called the 350 puts here. So I could have called this like a couple of days before. Anyways, I called this late. 
it worked, it dropped, boom. Take it to the right, you see where we are here? That was the area, fell into it again, boom, drop, boom, dropped. The cost of this was fairly, fairly inexpensive for a stock at this price point. One option would have cost you $260. An advanced trader risk of 30 contracts or risk of 7,800, that's a lot of money to risk, but if you've got it to spend, you can really get to town on these things. Sold at 450, not quite double, but close enough. Profit 5,700, again, in and out, in and out. You take it, you get the move, 24 to 48 hours, out, okay? Return on investment, 73%. Remember, for every trade that you're in, I don't care if it's an option, I don't care if it's a day trade, you're using your money, it's your money's being sucked up by the trade. Especially if you're in an option and you're in it overnight, it's being sucked up by using it, whatever you have at risk. Can't use it to do anything else tomorrow until you're out of that one. Hopefully you get the move and get out with the profit. And when you're in a day trade, you're using your margin or buying power or the money that you have in there to, to take the trade, even if it's for 15, 20 minutes, okay? So the idea of trading is chunking it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. Take it, get the move, get out. Take it, get the move, get out. Boom. That's what we're doing here. This is not long-term investing. I'm not shorting Facebook till the end of time. I didn't look at what this did today, but I'm sure it, it flipped and rallied like everything else. This is just getting a move that is a move to the downside or a move to the upside in a momentum fashion where you are taking the trade, booking the profit and getting out, and then you're going to do another trade and another trade and another trade. And that's how you book money and that's how you build your account. These are not long-term swing trades here, okay? Make sense? Does that make sense, people? Now let's talk about Boeing. Beautiful Boeing. Actually, let me go show you this. I called same day, it was July 30th, the 225 puts in Boeing. This was that same day we did the Facebook. Find it over here. Gosh, this is a while ago now. Closed here, gap down, fell, boom, dropped. Fell, boom, again called the 225s. I didn't even hold some of these things that long. They were profitable pretty fast, but they kept going. Anyways, you can see how this fell. The red bar here depicts what? Selling. Then we had continued selling, and actually this was continued selling here in the tail. This open fell, okay? Anyways, this was pretty cheap too. Again, for the cost of the stock, over $200, 240 for one. One contract, you could have spent $240, and no one, anyone the trade should be able to afford $240 in a risk, okay? You would have made 96%. Sold at 470, profit 6,900 on a risk of 7,200. It's a nice trade. This was an advanced trade of risk of 30 contracts. Again, if you have the money, you can do it. You could take half. You could have taken 3,500 risk. You could take 1,000. You could have taken one, like I said, for $240. Either way, it's the idea of taking the trade, getting the move, getting the profit. Now here's a day trade. Again, I wanted to show you some day trades and options in here that we've done, just so that you can see it. it's the same system applied in the manner of taking the trade in whatever way that you want to apply it. This was back on 728, we shorted cake. This was a 15 minute of cake. And again, how did I know this would drop? How did I know this would be a short? Because I rated in the gap. And again, this is a 15 minute chart. Night before was up here around 55, boom. Gap down in the morning around under 51. It was above 50, but it was under 51. Open, dropped, boom. We shorted it. Drop, 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 drop. The next day it fell too. Actually it fell the 29th and the 30th, but we did it on the 28th. So this was the one that was a 728. Here's the daily. Here you can see the gap better. Closed here, okay. Gapped down, fell, okay. Didn't even hold this all the way, okay? We exited this 48.86. Once it broke 49, here's 49. This kept going. This kept going. Look where it did. And I did not do an option in this, but I could have. Look what that did, actually. Uh, entry was 50.35. 2,500 shares. Risk was 3,000. Exit 48.86. Profit 3,725. 
This was a nice move, in and out quick, but again, you could have made more, and you also could have done it as an option, which I did not do. I did not do. So I don't do everything that's a day trade and option together. Sometimes I'll divvy them up, or I don't think I want to do an option in it, but you could have. If this has options, I didn't even look it up. I've never done an option in this. But like I won't day trade Amazon, I'll do options in that. Or So it depends, that's very expensive. But this kept falling. And you could have actually held this overnight. Either way, whether you wanna do options or whether you wanna do day trades, you, your sizing is gonna depend on how much you make as far as dollars and cents, okay? But you need to look at your total account size, the cash, and then back it off to determine like I said, you can't, you risk half your account in one trade. I know people that have done options that have risked their whole account in one trade. They did, then they just told me after the fact. Luckily, the trade worked, but that's so silly. Don't ever do that. That's just silly, silly, silly. Okay, if I call on Amazon and it happens to cost $50 for one and you have $5,000 in your account, you'd be risking your whole account. That's silly. Okay, you have to consider the fact that you want your account to last. You want to be able to grow. Think of going up the ladder 10 steps up, two steps back, three steps up. One step back, you've got to make progress, okay? But it is about the share quantity of the size. So whether you take 1,000 shares, 2,500, 5,000, whatever you want to take, I'm usually looking to have comma days. And again, if your risk is really small, that's okay. And if your risk is really small in the options, maybe you don't even try to get to 100%. If you're risking 500 bucks in an option, put the, put the sell order at, at 50 cents and make 250 because if you have a small account you got to really chunk it okay you got to grow it and what you want to be focusing on is growing it as fast as you possibly can so you want to be green 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 you don't want to be a piggy in holding too long and letting trade go against you especially if you have a small account okay you have a little more wiggle room to do that if you have a larger account or you're taking more size any questions here? So you can trade the system with an advanced risk or beginner risk. If you have questions about that or the size of your account, ask me. You could take the class and trade in a demo and not trade a lot of money at all. I don't suggest doing that for months and months on end, but you certainly could do that for the first week if you've never traded before or you're nervous about how to do this, or you could do it for the first month. I'd say after a month though, you gotta get to real live money. That's my two cents, okay? The idea is to learn it and then start to implement the program. But if you have a fat finger, you don't know what you're doing, you're new to platforms, charts, whatever, then trade in a demo, okay, until you get used to doing it. But one month is pretty much long enough, long, as long as anybody should be in a demo, in my opinion. You can open up an options account with as little as $2,000, okay? And prop, there's prop accounts too for those of you that want to do the active day trades on margin. You need $25,000 at a retail place, but you can open up a prop account with $2,500. Okay, so there's lots of different ways and types to trade out there with smaller amounts of money. There are even places you could trade with smaller amounts of money, although I don't necessarily suggest any of those. I think 2,000, 2,500 is a good starter account. And you can trade on a demo till you have that saved. Okay, any questions here? BA was a big winner for us in the month of August. Day trades options, we did it all. In fact, we did this Thursday and it worked. I mean, this this again has just given us, given us, given us tons of profits. We did BA a lot in 2020. When the COVID period began in February, in fact, even before that, I think we had shorted BA before COVID hit. But this stock, this it's an airline, as many of you know, Boeing, with many, many things that got hit in 2020 with COVID, this got hit a lot. Um, in fact, this chart has never recovered, never recovered. And I don't know if and when it ever will recover. It may someday, but it hasn't yet. So we've been taking advantage of this. We did decide some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful short moves. They're all done. We're all out of the trains now, but we got this a lot in the month of August. So this was back, oh no, this was even July. July 15th, I call the 220 puts in Boeing. Oh, this was before the 30th. I'll go back and show you this gap. Cost was 250, 30 contracts, risk was 7,500, sold at 14. You could have made a 460% return on investment in this trade. I will show you the chart in a minute. But that's $34,500 with a risk of 7,500. What if you took a beginner risk? What if you risk $1,000? You could have made 4,600 in this. 
This is even before last week's move. I forgot this one. July 15th. So you could have risked $1,000 in Boeing, four contracts, and made $4,600. That's a, 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 a specific way to take, for an example, a $5,000 account and end up basically doubling it. And there are people on my letter that have done that, really, because I've been on such a roll with the options really since Memorial Day. Now let's go back to the 15th and look at the chart right here. 13, 14, 15 was here. So again, closed here, gap down, two 20s, okay, fell, boom. And that's the nice thing about what? About gaps doing options is that you can get bigger moves overnight, okay? Gosh, that seems like a long time ago now, but that was really... Well, it was a month ago. It was more than a month ago now. But we did this all last week, too. We did all these. Close here, gap down, fell. 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 We day traded this. We did puts, and it was fabulous. But anyways, the one I have in here was huge. We did it here. Little baby gap. Boom. Fell. Now, again, day trades I like because I'm in that fast and I know where I am by the end of the day. Every single day I know, oh, I'm flat or I didn't do anything or I'm up or whatever. With options, if you hold options overnight, you never know where you're going to be or the market the next day. And the market absolutely does affect trades. Okay. This was a huge move. So if you had been on the options newsletter, you would have gotten this trade before the open on July 15th. 220 puts. Puts. Any questions on options? Any questions on day trades? Any questions on the differences between them? Here was the BA trade that we did on Thursday. BA, here is the daily chart going back a year. Boeing dropped off, fell, 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 fell rallied. And again, we did this on August 19th. Call the train in the live room. Entry was 217.10. Boom. 1,800 shares, which was an advanced trader risk. Of $2,790, exit at $212.90. I had a good exit on this, but it wasn't even the low of the day. I'll have to pull it up and see where it went. But I did have a good exit on this. I held this a little bit longer. I think it was on TV that day. Yeah, I was on TV Thursday. Some people got out of this earlier, but I was on TV and I stayed with it. And a couple other people did too. $7,560. bucks. How? Why? It dropped basically $4 plus. This stock Boeing, as you can see, I'll go back here to the blown up chart here, where you can see this is the candle from Thursday. Again, this is even a medium move for the stock, but we had a perfect entry. We shorted this sucker right at the tail, almost near the high, and got the drop. Look at that, that was beautiful. But this stock can move even bigger. Like this bar over here is a green bar, but you can see this bar is almost double the size of this bar. So, you know, again, the benefit of trading stocks, and specifically stocks that I like to trade, things that we know of, things that we do, Facebook, Apple, whatever, they move. They have big moves. They're fun to trade. You can take 1,000 shares or 2,000 shares of something and make a lot of money because they have big moves. That was a great call. They were all great calls. And then what if you did a smaller amount? On Thursday, if you had been in the room and took half the size, 900 shares, risk 13.95, got the drop, boom. Again, this was Thursday the 19th. You would have made $3,780, okay? Here, big drop. Any questions from anyone about day trades or options or anything we're talking about here so far? Talking, talking, talking. We'll leave time for questions. Anyways, I have a daily focus. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I never, usually don't know until I get up in the morning. There are some earnings this week I'll be looking at and taking a view of. But I focused on making money. That's what I do. I'm focused on the gap. That leads me to the direction of what's happening with, again, the institutional money. Is somebody going to come in like a hedge fund or a big, big trader and buy this or sell it and dump it? 
That's what I'm trying to pinpoint. It's the idea of predicting it. See, I'm, I'm like, NVIDIA went to the dream target today. My trade, I called early in the morning. So my rating system predicts something before it happens. I'm not predicting the gap. I'm predicting the move on the day after I see the gap. That gap helps me do the prediction. The gap is what I'm rating. And that is telling me, oh, this has a high odds that it is going to continue higher today. Therefore, I'm just talking about NVIDIA right now. Therefore, it's a good idea to go along this. That's what we should do. You see how it goes. Or it would be low odds. Low odds not to go long. And then we wouldn't do a trade in it. There are more trades not to do on any given day than there are trades to do. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's, there's more things that are crap than there's things that are good to do. And that's also why many days I'll do something different every single day. Now, sometimes I might do a repeat if I'm looking for something like a continuation, like we did the PayPal two days in a row. And that's only when I'm struggling to find something and if I like it. But many days we do something different, you know? Anyways, there are many benefits to trading. If you want to day trade, you're working less than an hour a day. You can work from home. That's good, too. And again, the information, the knowledge that you have in your experience will help you do well. And then you can build a small account into a larger account or whatever you need to do. You can take a larger account and build it into an even larger account. And I think that's the benefit of doing options of the day trades as well. So what do you need to do to get there? You need to learn the system, listen to me lecture in the room, ask me questions if you don't understand stuff after the class as well, and basically understand that if you wanna get ahead, it's going to take risk and you have to be willing to take the risk. I look at it as something that's exciting. I was excited when I started trading. I was excited to learn something new. I was excited to do it. I was excited every time I took a trade and put risk on. I'm still even excited now. I didn't know exactly that NVIDIA would go as big as it did today, but I, I ha had hoped that it would. I rated the gap. I followed the system. I had a good feeling. And then the excitement is, of course, that it does. Trading is exciting when you get it right, right a lot. No one likes losses. I get pissed when I lose, even if it's twice a week or twice a month or whatever it ends up being. I don't like losing, but I fight back then to win. And that's, again, my personality. But that's one of the reasons why I think it makes it beneficial to trade with me. I have that type of personality, which is what? I like to win. I want to succeed. I have an enormous drive to succeed. That's what makes it very advantageous to trade with me. So when I'm looking for things, I'm looking for, again, weighing the cost of the benefits versus the risk, looking for high odds in my trades, wanting them to, uh, you know, see if I'm getting the bigger move, the medium move, looking at the market, what else is going on in the world? There's many, many things right now, as we know, that are going on in the world. What's going on today? It's always a benefit versus a risk. I think that, that people, just like I said earlier, don't accept that. Like they're just blindsided by it. They're just kind of in la la land about it. Once you understand and accept that trading involves risk and you're willing to embrace it, you're gonna do a lot better. You're gonna do a lot better. You're not gonna be so upset with yourself and cringe when you lose. And you're gonna get right back on the horse then when you do lose to win. Understanding that you're putting the odds in your favor and that this is part of the process and that the benefits and the the uh, your future, once you get this and you learn it and you do it and you, and you use the system, is gonna be a lot brighter and a lot better off by using it. So that's part of learning as part of like when you go out again, when you learn a sport and you start out, you know, you're not winning at the beginning, every single race. You're running a marathon. You never did one before. Well, how do you expect to win? It's there's a process kind of like you can call it. You're paying your dues or whatever it is, but it's really just the, the, the learning. It's just the process of going through the action of training implementing the system, learning it, doing it, implementing the system again, asking questions, learning it, doing it, okay? Just like anything you would learn, really. So again, you have to want it if you wanna do it. And I think people go through, and I see Charles in here, I think people go through ups and downs and other things that have to do with their life. People go through personal things that happen in their life relationships, whatever, sometimes they fall off the wagon because other things have to do with trading come into their life and they can't focus. Acknowledge that. That's okay. You can go back to trading when you're ready. 
but you know the system that I'm doing now is the same system I've been doing since day one so you know it, it's really nice that people have taken the class you know train sometimes they go awry come back doing the same thing just doing the same thing as I've ever 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 done any questions here so far and yes, if anybody wants a trial, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com for a trial. Anyways, if you want to learn my system, it is called the Golden Gap. It's looking for institutional money in the market. I'm measuring gaps or rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Ideally, you know, like the NVIDIA. A big move on the day, again, like NVIDIA. Early confirmation of the bias and move between 9.30 and 10, again, like NVIDIA and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. I'm looking for that. I want a good risk to reward. Again, one to one on a day trade is what I think is good. And an option, I think 50% to 100% is good. And if you get more than 100%, it's fabulous when it happens in an option. And a lot of times what happens is you can't predict that either. It just happens. Either you get the market with you like today with NVIDIA or you're in it overnight and you get the follow through continuation move like we did in the Boeing. It just happens. It's not like you plan it when you get these, you know, 400% moves. It just happens. Okay. Any questions? Okay. But anyways, be consistent. Be consistent with your sizing. If you're going to risk $1,000 in every trade, that's what you're doing. You can't risk $1,000, $500, 2000 5000 No. It has to be the monetary risk has to be the same or close to the same on every trade you take. That's how you're going to be consistent. Otherwise, you take five trades and have four winners and one loser. And if the one loser, you risked too much money, you could be down even with that many wins. So, you know, you have to risk close to the same in every trade. Okay, that's my, that's my doorbell. Can you guys hang on? Just give me one second. I think it's the package time. Sorry about that. <laughs> we're, we're almost out of time, but I just have a couple more slides. Anyways, the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a system. It's a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade when and in what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. Again, I'm not predicting the gap. I'm predicting the move it's going to have after I see the gap. So you can learn the system and use it for options or day trades. If you want to be in the day trade room, you have to do the class. If you want to just join the letter, you can join the letter and subscribe for a year. There's no prerequisites for that. I'm using my gap rating system to call the trades on the newsletter. I'm looking at institutional money. We do longs, we do shorts in the letter, we do puts, we do calls, we do both, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Anyways, one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and fail all the time. We was talking about that earlier. So if you learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps, you don't need to do anything else. Because if your reason for doing this is to make money, you will make money if you use the system. Don't skip it. Don't fudge it. Don't make it up. Don't change the rules. I created the system. It took me three years to do it. Don't make shift it into something else. You follow it, follow it, follow it. You get up, there's no good gaps. You're not doing anything. You don't trade that day, okay? It's 20 points or more per the 26-point system. Don't fudge it, okay? Again, everyone knows you can trade from home. And if you want a trial for this week, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. The class, the last class for the summer is this weekend, weekend before Labor Day, August 28th and 29th. If you want to learn before the fall, this is the class to do it. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time cost the class is $6,999. It's U.S. dollars. You must email me for sign up forms. The next class is probably going to be the end of September. It's going to be a big gap between this class and the next class because I'm have my birthday in September. It's Labor Day. I'm going out of town. So uh if you want to trade for the fall this would be the class to learn and do it i'm doing a special a pre-fall special actually getting in a fall mood here in new york 
it's running through Friday. You get the trading room and the options that are free through the end of the year with this weekend's class. This is a really nice deal because then if you want to do both, you'll see if you want to do the options and the day trades. If you just want to do one or the other, you'll see. It's plenty of time to get both, plenty of time to learn it, plenty of time in the room. It's a good offer. And I'm running this through Friday. And again, if you want to travel to the room this week, email me. And I'm running this special through this Friday for this weekend's class. Class is online. Any questions from anyone at all? Only a couple minutes over here, even after the package guy. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I think we're gonna have some good fall trading. And again, market could be bullish, market could be bearish. We take it day by day. I look for the picks. Look for the picks, look for the gaps in the market, rate it. Any questions, new people, old people? Anybody there? <laughs> Quiet group tonight. All right, listen. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. Have a good evening. If anyone has questions, email me. Nice to see some of you. Have a good evening, and thank you so much, Kathy.